Ah, uh, yes. Odulus, what's going on, everyone? First of all, Gray Town here, and today the prey is going to be my Odulus, or Odalus, the Dark Call, uh, for the Nintendo Switch, which I played on the review. Uh, so, Odalus, the Dark Call, is the byproduct of what you would get if you mix chocolate, being Castlevania, and peanut butter, the Legend of Zelda, together into one chocolatey, peanut buttery, scrumptious package. But it's not all butterflies and unicorns here, as Odalus, the Dark Call, does suffer from some performance issues, as well as setbacks, as we will discuss later on, that prevent this ambitious concept from gaining any traction, while having the potential to, pot to become quite something really great if a sequel should ever arise. The game originally came out in 2015 for the PC and then made it on its way to the Switch and PS4 in 2017. Okay, so first up, the graphics and performance as always. The visuals in Odalus The Dark Call are immediately reminiscent to the likes of NES Castlevania in its CRT Cathar Ray 2 glory, meaning the entire game is played in a tubular mode or with the TV scan lines across the screen to make you feel like you've stepped into a DeLorean and went back to 1986 to relive the glory days of the 8-bit era. But while the graphics are indeed nostalgic, they do not perform the greatest throughout the entirety of the game's length. Sporadically, as you're playing the game, many of or um, you may or may not notice that uh, that the freaking screen uh, decides to have a seizure and start flickering uh, as the sprites or even uh, the entire screen at times will start to shake like an earthquake, uh, rather in some rather spotty gameplay segments or even frustrating encounters. During one of the boss fights, even in the latter half of the game, the entire screen shook. Re Quite relentlessly, and I could not tell what was happening, and only by something short of a miracle I was able to make out where the boss was located in his weak point and strike him and hit him enough times to end the torturous fidgeting and tantrum the screen was having at the time. Other times, uh, enemies may vanish as you approach them, which was actually fine for me, seeing as I didn't have to encounter any enemy presence blocking my way. Uh, granted, I may be too critical here, seeing as though the game was made with roughly a $10,000 budget and a handful of people. I just feel it's necessary to point out these hiccups and glitches should any of you uh, decide to venture forth and indulge in this game. Okay, so the gameplay and controls up next. Uh, Odalus the Dark Call is a 2D side-scrolling action platforming title with a twist. The spin is that while appearing like a, and playing like an NES Castlevania game on the surface, hacking and slashing your way to a simple sword, vanquishing foes, victories, uh, making it to the end of each stage to extinguish a boss and, and uh, keep trucking about, trucking forth. But beneath the crust of this awesome, this wholesome pie, you will find an exploration-like adventure similar to the Legend of Zelda series. Numerous times within your journey, you're tasked with finding keys within stages to unlock doors, move blocks, depress switches, unlock gates, and even strike pulley mechanisms to reveal hidden passageways. In tandem with the puzzle-like entities, you're tasked with uncovering and unlocking secrets and equipment power-ups via platforming, uh, hacking down breakable walls, and swimming to reach new depths, as well as new heights uh, as well. Uh, in addition to upgrades for your armor and sword, you can find equipment that will help you traverse the stage is better, such as harpy boots, which enable you to do your double jump, and a mask, which allows breathing in underwater defi definitely. Um, a cape, which allows you to glide and hover about, and a ground and a charm, which will allow you to perform quick dash, and a ring that will allow you to move heavy objects, as well as allowing you to upgrade and find heart pieces along the land, a la Legend of Zelda, to upgrade your uh, life bar. Enemies drop currency, which can be used to purchase healing items, durable weapons, and such as spears and axes and one-up pendants. There's checkpoints scattered throughout the game stages as well, and if you run out of lives, you're just forced to start the stage from the beginning without any checkpoints. Uh, while the game, your progress is constantly saved like Dark Souls, um, and you can even unlock shortcut fast travel points in between parts of stages too, which is nice and useful. And when you, you know if you happen to run out of lives, there's all the shortcuts you can unlock, which is cool. There's a ton of bosses in the game too, most of which are not too difficult to undertake. They are challenging, but not like frustrating. Less that the being said for the last boss and final boss encounter, which has a whopping three phases and took me about 30 tries to topple. The controls, sadly, are somewhat what hindered the performance and experience uh, as well, as I found them to be quite a bit wonky and stiff for the most part. But I'm unsure if this was an intentional design flaw, or um, not, you know, seeing as though the original NES Castlevania games controls were similar. I just expected uh, in this day and age to have somewhat modernized controls, at least to perf perfect and offset the nuance of classics like the, how they look here cosmetically, like the Castlevania started back in the glory days of old. 
Okay, moving on to the story narrative and campaign. The story of Odalis and Dark Call is simple, yet comes with a nice narrative twist in the final moments of the game, which I rather enjoyed. Your son is kidnapped by the forces of darkness, and it is up to you, the father, to brave the hordes of the demonic creatures to rescue your child. In the end, there was such a delightful revelation that complemented the story arc nicely that I found myself nodding in acceptance of the unique storytelling aspect here. Uh, while the focus is rather you know light on the story and heavy on the gameplay, I appreciate the effort here nevertheless, and the hard-working... Uh, and the hard work in trying to convey a compelling tale that worked and meshed well together overall in the end, I felt. So the sound and music, there's some nostalgic and retro sound effects here in place when it comes to the combat and character interactions as well, and there's quite a bit of memorable 8-bit chip tunes to be heard here. Uh, while there's some catchy melodies within the games and some of the game's levels, there are few and far in between I felt, nothing really stuck out or, and or stuck with me for long, uh, as other similar indie games did, such as Shovel Knight, Messenger, and Katana Zero, but other than that, it's pretty, the sound is pretty solid for the most part. And now in regards to the replay value, I'm gonna have to go with moderate here. I honestly had a roller coaster ride and experience with Odalis and Dark Call. On one side I felt that it took me uh, a while to get into the game and I did not quite understand what it wanted me to do at first or what it wanted to be. But once I got a handle on the type of game it wanted to portray, which is about halfway point through the game, I know it sounds a little long, but trust me, if you stick with it, it's, it's the payout is really good. Uh, which is one, you know, they want you to be backtracking to previous stages to unlock secrets and obtaining hidden items required for progressing forward and so on and so forth. Then on the other hand, I found myself wanting to return to it like I, after I reached the, the, the first half of the game, got through the first half of the game, I wanted to return to it more and more up until the final act when I was waning through and I said, you know what, I obtained all the power-ups I could and whatnot, let me just end this uh, before it gets a little tedious. My overall score, and is it worth your time? Uh, Odalis and Dark Home may take a, take a bit of time to get to settle into, but once you do and figure out your own little niche and get the gist of and of it and, so, you know, in the swing of how things roll, I think any fan of classic side-scrolling action platforming adventure games like Castlevania in tandem with the Legend of Zelda series should be good to go with this one. Uh, it's only about a seven-hour game in total, a bit on the light side and difficulty side, less for the final boss, which takes all many tries to get through, and has some light RPG elements to find as well. The only thing that retains Odalis the Dark Call from being more than just a solid, just solid in its performance and controls, uh, I, I just felt that, um, you know, with a, with a bigger team or more funding, this game could have been the new dominant successor and the, and the simple uh, fusion of action platformers with, like, uh, adventure games and, like, RPGs like Twist, similar to what Bloodstained Ritual of the Night gave us. I think that's what it was trying to be, but Bloodstained just fucking nailed it to the cross. Uh, perhaps if there's ever a sequel, we'll get a bigger following and a bigger support staff and whatnot to make that dream become a reality. But other than that, it's 7.5 out of 10 for me. And with that being said, that's my review of Odell's The Dark Call. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, we love you a long time as always. And with that being said, you guys have a great day, and I'll catch you on the next one.